Hi there! In the Hanami Master episode number 2, I have shown you how to list articles in Hanami 2.0 application and in the third episode, how to prettify them using Bulma CSS framework. However, there is an issue with it. I have this application running at the moment so we can easily see the problem I'm talking about. Basically, whenever you refresh the page, the article details are changed. It happens because I've cheated a bit in the previous episodes. First, to keep the videos short and focused on the rendering part of the framework. But secondly, because it was before the release of Hanami 2.0 alpha versions, so it was unclear how ROM updates will affect the implementation. Now with ROM 6.0 ready and amazing Hanami 2.0 integrations in place, it's finally a time to finish it off and showcase you the complete integration of ROM with SQL database with a Hanami 2.0 application. I was able to pull this episode together thanks to the awesome work of Hanami core team member Mark Boski. He pulled together a complete to-dos application with ROM integration and all crude actions in place, showcasing how to replace the Hanami actions with the web pipe. This is an amazing example of elastic nature of Hanami components, which are easily replaceable by whatever you wish. He open sourced it on GitHub, so I strongly encourage you to check it out. As always, you can easily access it using resources links in this episode. When I was focused just to show the rendering part of the Hanami application, I came with a quick solution to define a dummy entity in the main slice with the default parameters in place. Those entities can be easily created in any place of the application and I bravely created them inside of view object. To quickly generate a random entity to be displayed on the page, I used a faker gem. If you don't know faker, it allows to fill your objects with random data taken from different sets without an effort. I heavily use it for seeding data in my projects and I appreciate the effort of the main author, Vitor Oliveira. This guy has five times more contributions in the last year than me, which I see as pretty impressive. Feel free to check out his other projects as he manages a few popular repositories. However, let's go back to the topic. For each created article, we also create a random author and assign it to the author reader. When I open the author entity, you will see a very similar data structure where everything is just randomly filled in using faker helpers. Initially, I just grabbed those entities in the view and created a collection of randomly filled objects and then exposed the result to the template. Yes, seriously. But now let's implement it using actual records fetched from the database as one should expect. First, we need to create the necessary database tables for articles and authors. And for that, I will use Hanami Migration Generator. This will create empty migration files, but with correct timestamps automatically added to the file names. Now let's fill these migrations in and create an authors table with the ID as a primary key, first name, and the last name to be listed in articles later on. Now for the articles table, I will need a bit more fields, basically the same as I had in the dummy entity before. Therefore, I need a title, excerpt, content, the thumbnail URL, all type of string. Then I need the author reference and the publication date information. Now I can run the migrations and my tables are created. If you want to know more about migration DSL in Hanami, ROM migrations are based on SQL created by Jeremy Evans, one of Ruby legends, I would say. You can check the detailed SQL migrations documentation here if you are interested more about the topic. Now having those database tables in place, I will create relations and the repositories for both resources. Hanami allows you to have separate sets of persistence-related resources for each application slice, 
but because my application is so small, I will create them in the global namespace. Keep in mind that sandbox is my application name. First, I will create the article relation, which inherits from ROM SQL relation, and define the schema based on articles table, setting a flag infer to true. This will automatically set my attribute readers on the entity based on the table definition. Then, within the schema, I will define the belongs to association for articles author. Let's repeat the same thing for authors, with the difference that author has many articles. Please notice that there is no module sandbox in either of the relation files. It's because there is a known namespacing bug in the pre-alpha to Hanami releases that should be fixed very soon. Because we do entity definition based on the table definitions, there is no need to manually define entities at the moment. Let me get rid of those dummy entities files then. And now let's add an article repository. In ROM, relations are responsible for communicating with database to fetch the data. There you define queries specific for the DB you use or, if you wish, scopes definitions. Repositories are database agnostic and can use multiple relations to update and fetch resources from many databases if needed. This is why it's extremely easy to replace database adapters in Hanami while keeping the same interface and minimizing the required changes to be done across application. Let me define the article repository now so we can fetch and create resources in the database. By adding commands create, we extend the default repository by the ability to create resources, which we can use to seed the data to our system. Then I just need to define the all method, and inside I combine articles with their authors, returning the array of results at the end. Now I will also add author's repository. I don't need it for listing my articles, but it will be useful for seeding data into our database. We have almost everything done now. Let's tweak our actions and views yet. Previously, I have instantiated the article collection inside of the view directly, but that's not the correct way to go. View object should only contain view related logic, but all data should be passed into it from actions. Therefore, let's remove the block from the expose method and open the corresponding action. Here, I will inject the articles repository as a dependency and add a name repo to the newly created reader. Have you spotted that the root key is prefixed with an application string? We can have several containers defined in the system, and the persistence dependencies are managed by application container, and this is where this prefix comes from. Now I need to handle the incoming request by rendering the corresponding view with the articles variable passed in. As a value, I will call my repository fetching all articles into it. Because we have articles variable exposed, there is nothing we need to do in the templates. This is all that's required to make our articles listing working. However, visiting the articles page in the browser now will show you an empty list of articles because there are none saved in our database yet. In the terminal, I can open Hanami console to manually create records, but we already know Faker and we know that we can do better. I will use dbseeds file to create all necessary resources in the automatic way. To do so, I will open the seeds file and add the necessary insertion rules. First, I require the faker, and then load the author's repository from the main slice container. Then let me create a few 
completely random records. First will be me as an author, then the Hanami Master project in case the author of the article would like to remain anonymous, and finally you, my awesome subscriber, in case you will ever subscribe me and want to write a Hanami article on your own. Now I need to fetch the IDs of all my authors to randomly generate one of each newly created article. Then I need to get the article's repository in the same way and create a loop of maybe 20 random records in it. Here is where I will use Faker similar to what I did before in the entity model. I already saved this script aside, so let me copy and paste it here. Then let's run our seats and open the browser. It looks pretty similar to what we had before, however, after refreshing the page, everything stays the same. Now, when our list works, we can quickly go back and apply the same changes to single article view. Inside of the view file, I remove the dummy article fetching logic from here and move it to the action. Again, I inject the repository dependency and handle the response, this time setting the article variable to be exposed. To fetch the article, I will call the find method with the IT extracted from the request parameters. Then in the repository, I will define the find method to behave exactly as we would expect. I will combine the articles with the author and find it by primary key, passing the given ID as an argument. Then I will ensure that only one record is returned. Now, after restarting the server, page should work just well. Oh, it seems I made a little mistake in the show action, so let me visit it very quickly. Yes, I used the render method on the action object instead of the response. Now should be just fine. Hooray! The article is persistent and does not change even after the page refresh. I can safely browse my publications and manage resources exactly as one would expect from a blog application. That's all for today. I hope you have enjoyed this episode and if you want to see more content in this fashion, subscribe to this YouTube channel and follow me on Twitter. As always, all links you can find in the description of this video or in the hanamimastery.com. Also, if you have any suggestions of amazing Ruby gems you would like me to cover or ideas how to improve, please mention them in the comments. I would like to thank Sebastian Hribar, Thomas Carr and Yuzeo for supporting this project. Really appreciate it. Also thanks to all my existing sponsors for the continuous support. Any financial support allows me to spend more time on creating this content, promoting great open source products, open source heroes and Hanami in general. As usual, check out two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, you are awesome. And see you in the next Hanami Mastery episode covering interesting topics related to Hanami and everything else happening in the Ruby world. Have a great day and happy coding!